Amanda, it's not a bad assignment. One of my favorites of the year, and there really is a different atmosphere this spring here at Penn State. Happy Selection Sunday. Here are your playoff teams. Greg, I got to say, I'm a little overdressed here. I'm wearing a full suit. Didn't realize I was going to a tailgate. When you're out there shooting those games in the cold and your fingertips uh. are going numb. You had the run last year in the Rose Bowl. Your Heisman candidate coming in this year. Have we seen the best of Saquon Barkley? Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Penn State fans, I will eat your collective pain with this Stromboli. Bob Flounders, wish me luck. You got this. Come on, you got it. Win a ticket right there. I figured I'd bring in a Celtics fan I know very well. My dad, John Welter, gracious enough to take some time away from the lake in New Hampshire. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Happy Father's Day. Let's go to the ninth inning, tied at four with the Phillies, and let's flash back to April 16th. Harper walks it off. So what do you think, worth the money? Let's go back to the future. I think so. How much is a touchdown worth? Six points, right? Well, for Tommy Kirchhoff, it's worth a whole lot more than that. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I can see people, in, like my family up there, my, fa my dad's uh, parents, my dad's sisters. Uh, looking down, cheering me on. It reminds me of maybe what he went through with them. Kershaw, right side, rolling. A step up. He's going to air it downfield, look in the end zone, and it's going to be a touchdown. It's going to be a touchdown, Trinity. Tommy is Trinity High School's quarterback. He wears number 14, just like his father. That means a lot. It's an honor for me. Um, Growing up, I always wanted that number. Sometimes the older kid had it and I couldn't have it, but I'd always ask him if I could have it. Tom Kirchhoff led Cedar Cliff to a state finals appearance in 1988. He later went on to start Lafayette College and even had a brief career with the Eagles. I think that also influenced me to love football as much as I did growing up, playing all the time. And he never forced us to do it. Everything changed in 2010. They called my brother and I down and they were crying. We talked for two hours about what the disease was because I never heard of it at the time. Tom was diagnosed with ALS. He'd lose the ability to walk, speak, swallow, and breathe. But then going from playing football every day in the backyard and the living room to him not being able to throw, it was tough. You're essentially trying to help somebody through the dying process while still, still living. Six months later, Tommy's mom, Stacy, found out she had stage three skin cancer. You know, you're trying to deal with your own health, your husband's health, your children, their mental health, which is the ultimate, you know, most important thing. Stacy was able to win her battle. Unfortunately, ALS is a fight that can't be won. I didn't realize how hard it was gonna be when he actually did pass. March 10th, 2015. It was tough, you just see his breathing machine going, but he's not breathing. Take off the breathing machine, he's like shaking, and then uh, all of a sudden he stopped shaking, and that was, uh, that was tough to look at. He's quick, right? Mm -hmm. Which brings us to today. He's quicker than he looks. Meet Cedar Cliff quarterback, Bobby Whalen. He's, he might be closer than some people that I'm blood related to, so it was, it was really hard. I spent a lot of time at their house. Bobby's dad played football with Tom at Cedarcliff. After everything the family had been through, he wanted to help. And it was just for myself. I was just going to do it by myself. And then, and then I thought about it, and I was like, me and Tommy are both quarterbacks. We're both 14, and it's for his dad. So, so I definitely want him to be a part of it. And he said, I want to do something where people can donate money, flat donations, donate um, for every touchdown we score. And We Will Win for ALS was born. With every touchdown Tommy or Bobby score, a donation is made to Project ALS, a nonprofit organization. Our goal originally was 50,000, and in the first two weeks, we uh, instantly raised it to 100,000. And they're almost there. Pledges on the website are up to $2,000 per touchdown. That's a pace of $75,000 by season's end. 
their father has to be beaming from heaven. So what's a touchdown really worth? Everything. Every time I throw a touchdown, I think of him. Every time I throw a pass and it goes for a long game, I think of what he did and how he raised me to be. So you think about Great how far story. ALS awareness has come. Remember the Ice Bucket Challenge yeah. a couple years ago sure. to We Will Win for ALS. So Tommy and Bobby really making a difference. If you want to pledge for their cause, you can go to projectals.org. And they're terrific. The Steelers are so dramatic on the field, off the field. They even find a way to make a game versus the Colts a soap opera. You know what? The Steelers are the this is us of the NFL. Today's episode, Steelers at Indianapolis, starring Mike Tomlin, Ben Roethlisberger, and everyone's new favorite character, Juju Smith-Schuster. Third quarter, Ben to Schuster. Steelers down 17-9, but a family is only a family if everyone pulls their weights. Fourth quarter, the defense comes up with a pick. And it's even better with acoustic music. Everything's better with acoustic music. Six to go. A chance to take the lead, but Chris Boswell off the goal post. Well, it wouldn't be This Is Us without some tears. But wait, what's this? A flashback? No, it's another chance. Boswell good as time expires. A happy ending on This Is Us. Wild game between the Redskins and Vikings. No theme music necessary. Case Keenum to fantasy football MVP, Adam Thielen, 166 yards, a touchdown, and one leapfrog celebration. Kirk Cousins trying to bring Washington back late, laying out at the goal line here. That would make it a one-score game, but the comeback comes up short. The Vikings, 7-2, 38-30, the final. Book delivers a dart, intercepted. Look out, Trajan Bandy, the true freshman, break out the chain again. Touchdown Ohio State, what a performance. What a big win for Auburn as they go to 8-2, and two, and Georgia falls from the ranks of the unbeaten. Number three, Notre Dame, number 12, Michigan State, and number one, Georgia, all go down Saturday. Even Alabama barely survived. Well, if we learned anything from college football this weekend, it is hard to win on the road. Of course, Penn State knows this very well. After two straight road losses, they were happy to be home. Nittany Lions hosting Rutgers. After a sleepy start, Trace McSorley got the offense going. Three total touchdowns for him. Meanwhile, Saquon Barkley struggled to find a running room again, but a hook and ladder play was the highlight of the game. A 35-6 win, Penn State focused on the finish. The season's still there. We still have games to finish. And um, like I said, a lot, we, host, we host, host ourselves such a high esteem here. An eight and two season seems like it's, the, it's the, the worst thing that's possible. But like I said, there's a lot of teams um, that would love to be in our position. Big picture, yes. Playoff picture, no. Penn State playing for a New Year's Six Bowl at this point. Jerry Palm has them facing Notre Dame in the Cotton Bowl. Hershey Bears at Wilkes-Barre, 2-0 Penguins in the second period. Bears go to the old dump and chase. Dustin Gaisley cuts the lead in half, but all Penguins after that. Looking like the Pittsburgh team tonight. Thomas DePauli makes it 3-1. Minute later, Daniel Sprong puts it away. The Bears fall 5-1. NASCAR playoffs at Phoenix. Danny Hamlin needs a win to stay alive. 43 laps to go. Chase Elliott. Passes Hamlin for third, and Hamlin goes into the wall. His tire goes out, and his title hopes go with it. Karma for Elliott with 10 to go. The 20, Matt Kenseth takes the lead, and Matt Kenseth wins the Can-Am 500. And the final four set for Miami next Sunday. Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, Martin Truex Jr., and Brad Keselowski. Chase Elliott, Danny Hamlin, the first two outs at fifth and sixth. After a warm and pleasant high school football regular season, the temperature dropped big time Friday night. 
Playoff football must be here. These are the top plays of the week. Well, it sure felt like a snow cone on Friday. Christmas music may play on the radio, but I'm not about to let it take over top place. That's better. High school football playoffs heating up. At number seven, it's Williams Valley and Dylan Raybuck. This kid just owns District 11, running all over Tri-Valley. Vikings win the district. Number six, District 3 AA Finals, your Catholics Kyle Dormer to Riley Brennan. He's feeling that one today, but hey, smile. At least you're in top place. Number five, Single A Finals, Steel High wins in a shootout. Malachi Young to Jarve Flowers. The Rollers win their second straight district title. Number four, McDevitt eliminated by Shippensburg in a miracle comeback last postseason. Friday, they got their revenge. Tanias Becker takes the screen pass and he's gone. Crusaders win 43-22. Number three, Manheim Township dominates Central Dauphin in 6A. Luke MG to Reese Bender, the Harvard commit, throwing with Ivy League precision. Number two, Manheim Central undefeated in 5A. Waynesboro never had a chance. Evan Simon to Jake Novak, and there's the circle button. Central wins 55 to nothing. And finally, at number one, the Harrisburg Cougars. Micah Parsons living up to the five-star hype. Reverses field for the touchdown. Cougars win 46-14. Micah Parsons, you have our top play of the week. Here. When you're out there shooting those games in the cold and your fingertips uh. are going numb, it's a little easier when you got a good game, a little easier when you got a space uh -huh. heater. But we had some great <laughs> games this week. We should have another round this week coming up. Makes it worth it. Yeah. <laughs>